All right, in this last lesson in this section, we are gonna show you how we do a petty cash example. So uh, with that, let's get started here and talk about our example prompt. So in our example prompt, company A establishes a $200 petty cash fund on January 1st. Now from January 2nd through the 15th, payments were made from the fund as listed below. On January 16th, the custodian requested a replenishment of the petty cash fund. So on January 2nd, we paid cash to a restaurant uh, for a back to work party that cost $92. On January 7th, we reimbursed an employee who purchased supplies for $22. On January 12th, we paid cash for fuel for a rental car for the company in the amount of $18. On January 13th, we paid cash for supplies for the mailroom in the amount of 48. And on January 15th, we paid cash for shipping of a package to an employee for $14. The problem tells us in part A to prepare the journal entry for the establishment of the petty cash account. Part B, we are gonna prepare the journal entry for the replenishment of the above or reimbursements for the uh, transactions above. And part C, we're gonna prepare the journal entries for the replenishment of the petty cash fund. So let's talk a little bit about each one of these parts and help you solve this problem. So the first one here, company A establishes a $200 petty cash fund on January 1 from January and then Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, prepare the journal entries for establishment of the petty cash fund. The reason I stop this information, we don't need, so why go through it? All right, so uh, we have to establish it. So to establish it, we need to do a journal entry. So we're gonna issue a check, but who do we issue a check to? We issue a check to a employee. Now, the employee does owe us the money, but we don't actually do an accounts receivable because they're not a customer. And so we use a special account called a petty cash account or a petty cash fund or a petty cash whatever. So uh, what happens in this journal entry? Well, the cash account will decrease. So the cash account actually decreases by $200. So a decrease in cash is a credit to cash. And then we need to debit something. And we're gonna debit this new account called Petty Cash. So we're gonna debit Petty Cash for $200. That way we're separating the $200 in our book so that people will kind of understand and know that we actually have petty cash of $200. If we left it in the cash account, our cash balance here will not match our bank statement balance and then we're gonna have to reconcile that every single month. Instead, now we're taking the $200 out of the cash account, putting it in its own separate account, that way we know we have a petty cash of $200. All right, moving on to part number two, we've got all of these transactions here, and it says to prepare the journal entries for reimbursements of the above transactions. Well, what did we know? What do we know about the reimbursements of these transactions when the transactions occur? When the receipt is given to the petty cash custodian, there is no journal entry that is completed. When is the journal entry completed? The journal entry is completed when we ask for re uh, when we ask. Uh, to have our uh, petty cash reimbursed, okay? So when we have it replenished, that's when we do the journal entry. So in this case, there is no journal entry. Make sense? All right, let's go on to the replenishment. So now we need to replenish the petty cash. And now that we need to replenish the petty cash, we're going to give the receipts to the accounting department. The accounting department will now book all of the expenses related to the petty cash amount and then issue a check for the total amount of receipts so that that can replenish the petty cash account. So. What I would do is here is I would look at all of these expenses, classify them into the different accounts, and then expense them. So in this case, we'll talk a look at the first one here. We paid cash to a restaurant for a back to work party. Well, that should be maybe meals expense. So increases in expenses are a debit. So we are going to debit meal expense for $92, okay? And then we move on to the next one here. We reimburse an employee who purchased supplies. So we're just gonna use supplies expense. We're not gonna use the asset supplies because these are low dollar, dollar value amounts. We're just gonna go ahead and expense them. So we're gonna debit supplies expense 
for $22. The next one here, paid fuel for a rental car for the company for $18. So that would be either fuel expense, I'm gonna use transportation expense. And that's for $18. Next one here on January 13th, it looks like we bought some more supplies for the office. So we are going to debit supplies expense. And some people would say, well, why don't you just combine it with the other one? You could, I'm not. I want you to see it detailed, detail, but you could take the 48 plus the 22, that gets you a 70, that probably is okay. Just not gonna do it. All right, and then, um, Paid cash for shipping of a package to an employee. So that would be like shipping expense. Uh, $14, okay. So that takes care of all of our expenses. Now we have to replenish the cash. So how do we do that? Well, the best way here is that we are going to credit cash, right? We're gonna decrease cash for the this amount um, and then that decrease in cash would be in the form of a check that we would give to our custodian. So in this case, we're going to credit cash for 194. Now, there is another way to do this here. Instead of debit crediting cash, we could credit petty cash for 194, and then when we issue the check, we can issue the check by debiting uh, petty cash for 194 and then crediting cash from 194. So that's a two-step process there. So if I credit petty cash here, then my petty cash really is down to $6. So if you think of the T, the petty cash started with 200, decreased by 194. So the petty cash should be six. So the person who's the petty cash custodian should have $6 in their account or in their possession. And so technically uh, that's okay. And then we replenish it by writing a check for 194. So we'll, when we issue the check, we revert, we debit petty cash to make it go from six to 200. And then we'll credit the cash account because we're actually issuing a check for 194. So this is kind of like a simple way to get rid of the petty cash um, account uh, or double entry and just make it one single entry. But you can do it that way by crediting petty cash here, and then doing another entry for the actual issuance of the check. Either way would be fine. Now, the reason why that it doesn't really, the reason why that this works is that it doesn't affect petty cash account balance. Um, so when we originally debited petty cash for 200, it still would be 200 when we issue another check for 194. So um, different ways of thinking at the end of the day. So that is a look at a petty cash example, the three steps that are involved to establish the petty cash account, then reimburse employees for the expenses uh, related to the business, and then how do we replenish the petty cash account at the very end, remembering that journal entries are the key to making it all all work at the end of the day. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next section. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw, share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.